turn you back to the story of the death of Russian activist Alexei Navalny. We heard this morning that Navalny died in the maximum security prison in Russia's Arctic where he was being held. In Washington, U.S. President Joe Biden praised Navalny and laid the blame for his death on Vladimir Putin. He was brave. He was principled. He was dedicated to building a Russia where the rule of law existed and where it applied to everybody. Navalny believed in that Russia, that Russia. He knew it was a cause worth fighting for. Make no mistake, Putin is responsible for Navalny's death. Putin is responsible. What has happened to Navalny is yet more proof of Putin's brutality. For more on the consequences of Navalny's death, Tinitin Jeparidze is an analyst with Eurasia Group focusing on the Russia-Ukraine war. Tinitin, thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. It's an incredibly sad day for all of us. Of course, many will argue that this was a long time coming and it was not really a shocker in a way. But of course, those of us who hoped for the best, who hoped that one day Navalny would leave the prison and enter the scene in a very different Russia to the one that he left, um, unfortunately, that day did not come to pass, at least not for Navalny, not for those of us who have been keeping our fingers crossed for Russia to embark on a different trajectory, which clearly is not going to happen anytime soon. And this is this is an ex extremely sad um, development also for, for the world that is in many ways watching Russia, but also dependent on Russia, other countries in the region that are still very much replicating, if not directly mirroring, um, the actions of Vladimir Putin and, and the Kremlin broadly, countries like Belarus, where we have seen similar attempts in terms of opposition that was very, very quickly um, clamped down on. And we can expect that this will be a trigger and a signal for others who may have similar ideas to the ideas that Alexei Navalny had back in the day when he entered Russian politics, a move that was very bold, very courageous, even if some did not agree with his politics in terms of what he was trying to accomplish broadly. And the move that he made against all odds was one that, of course, has to be admired. He went back to Russia knowing he would be imprisoned and knowing that this day was possible, if not probable. And in that Oscar-winning documentary about him, Navalny said, if they decide to kill me, it means that we are incredibly strong. How do you think Russian citizens will react to his death? Well, I think, unfortunately, I hate to say this, but I, I don't think that many in Russia, those who are still in Russia, not exiled, um, are, are going to, to feel that they are stronger today. I think today and the, the messaging that the Kremlin is pushing toward its citizens is, is very much aimed at weakening them. The morale is going to be weak. Um, we saw some very limited, but nonetheless, some attempts um, at protests, uh, some who did go out peacefully to lay flowers on various memorials um, across Russia, including in Moscow, St. Petersburg, and Yuzhny Novgorod. But of course, they were very quickly sent home, mildly speaking. There were some arrests that were reported, um, and we are likely going to see something similar unfold over the next few days. Although over the last couple of years, as we all know, given the full-scale invasion of Ukraine and Russia's continued aggression, um, there, there has also been aggression internally inside Russia against dissent. And this is one more reminder for the Kremlin that they cannot just sit back and watch it unfold because it is much too dangerous. And we could also add um, another point um, for Vladimir Putin. Um, this is a stark reminder that there is public sentiment that he has to account for, that he has to bear in mind, even though many, if not all, expect him to win with a landslide, right. which is increasingly likely to happen no matter what happens internally inside Russia uh, with developments such as the one that's the set development that we witnessed today with Navalny's passing. Um, we, we already know that Vladimir Putin will, if nothing else, further tighten his grip, tighten his grip in terms of the, the public sentiment, uh, public freedom to speak up. And we will see it in, in other areas, not just offline in the streets, but also online. Because um, as of lately, uh, the, the Russian regulators, media regulators, have also started regulating 
the social media more strictly and criticism in the social media realm is also dangerous because right. one does not have to leave the comfort of their home anymore to to actually go out there and speak of their outrage in a public setting you say that this will encourage vladimir putin to tighten his grip which is is, is hard to think of you know from outside of russia because we already view it as pretty much a clenched fist on the Russian population. But what, what could we expect to see there? And what could this mean for stability uh, uh, inside Russia and for Putin's future, potentially? Well, many expected that when the aborted mutiny of Yevgeny Prigozhin, the Wagner chief, um, occurred last summer in June of 2023, that suddenly the Putin regime would be threatened. Um, but today, what we see is that at least in the nearer term, perhaps not long term, but in the nearer term, the Putin regime is safe. It is stable. And to a degree, um, the Russian authorities have been able to maintain the stability slash stagnation to a degree, right? I mean, especially in the economic realm, but they are still able to move forward with their plans. Such developments as the one that, that we are witnessing and following closely today with Navalny's death is, of course, going to be um, a reminder for Putin that he cannot take public support for granted. Yes, according to independent media polls like Levada Center, he has about 85% of public approval in terms of the ratings. But at the end of the day, he must understand, even if he doesn't have his finger on the pulse as he once used to, just given the fact mm -hmm. that he is allegedly watching everything unfold from the, the comfort and safety of his bunker. Nonetheless, he knows that the 85% is mostly resting, this the support is resting on fear and self-censorship. Who will dare say that they do not support Vladimir Putin, especially those who are surveyed in the streets of Moscow, St. Petersburg, and other parts of the country? Very few. Well, who fills the void left by Navalny's death? Is there another person to pick up uh, the torch of, of his cause and, and speak out against corruption and push for reform inside Russia? Is there a person who can fill the space that Navalny occupied even from inside prison? Well, very sadly, David, those who could have already been imprisoned. So mm. they are in jail, and hopefully their fate is not going to resemble that of Alexei Navalny. But nonetheless, for the foreseeable future, or at least as long as the Putin regime is in power, they are likely going to stay behind bars. So any chance of them being able to do very much, let alone try to change the political reality that Russia lives under, the system, um, that's very, very unlikely to change. The chances are negligible. So in that respect, we don't anticipate anyone to be able to readily step in. Um, this process will take a long time. And as we know, in terms of public sentiment changing at any point in Russia, it always takes a very, very long time. So even though over the next few days and perhaps a few weeks, we will see certain outbursts in a limited contained manner, such as the ones that we've right. seen already today in terms of public outrage, but there will be very limited appetite for the public to, to push other political activists to go out there because the example has been set by Navalny's death. And that is the, I think the only positive for the Kremlin, this is just a sort of a free, um, in, in terms of the, the creation of the teaser, a free teaser for um, the public to, to consume. If you do what Alexei Navalny did, this is what's going to happen to you sooner or later. This is bound to keep a lot of the political activists who could have taken his place now um, to, to essentially either stay at home or stay in exile. And those, as I mentioned, that are already behind bars, this process and, and this development will further prolong this, this very unpleasant reality for them. Tinatin Japarizzi, analyst with the Eurasia Group. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for having me.